Today we're speaking with Dr. Kimberly Vanderveen, a fellowship trained endocrine surgeon with Sarah Cannon Cancer Institute at Rose Medical Center. She is discussing the rising incidence of thyroid cancer, one of the most diagnosed cancers in the world. Dr. Vanderveen, where is the thyroid located and how does it work? Perfect. Well, the thyroid's actually located in the lower neck, so it actually sits right above the collarbones, right about here. Most people get confused and think the thyroid's the lump up high, which is actually a voice box. So if I take this fabulous little model here, we put it on my neck, and you can see the thyroid gland itself sits between the voice box and the collarbones. For some people, it actually can sit underneath the collarbones. The goal of the thyroid is to make hormones, and specifically thyroid hormones. Uh, those are called T3 and T4 hormones. What those do, they're sort of the pace setter for the system, like the metabolism regulator. So if you think of a rowing team or people on a boat and somebody sitting at the front saying, stroke, stroke, that's what the thyroid does. So if it's overactive and, and working too fast, organs in the body get the message to overact and that can cause a lot of problems. If it's not really giving the message strong enough or not sending out enough hormones, we can get a slowed down message and people can feel unwell if that's the case too. So it really is the pace that are very important hormones for the body. And what is a thyroid nodule? So thyroid nodules are just bumps inside the thyroid. Uh, it turns out actually thyroid nodules are very common. A lot of people have heard the term goiter or maybe had a parent or a family member with a goiter. What a goiter is, is it's just an enlarged thyroid and the most common reason for that is lumps inside the thyroid. When we look at models of the thyroid, they often will show them kind of like this little model here with a bump hanging off and that's not what happens in real life. In real life, those no nodules tend to be inside the thyroid and so they tend to swell the thyroid and it can make it look enlarged and so that would be what a goiter is. If we went out on the street today and we took this fabulous sonogram machine behind me and tracked down some people and said, hey, come over here and get a sonogram of your thyroid, we'd find anywhere from 25 to 75 percent of people just walking around on the street would have at least one nodule inside their thyroid. So nodules by themselves usually aren't dangerous, usually aren't cancerous, but there are a small percentage, about 5 percentage, that we care quite a bit about. And when would you recommend a biopsy? So thyroid nodules, like children, they all have their own personalities. So you can have multiple nodules in your thyroid, but they can all behave very differently. The ultrasound machine or sonogram that you see behind me is how we really get a behavior plan for a nodule. And that's how we decide when it's appropriate to do a biopsy, if it has worrisome behavior features on that picture, or if we can watch it carefully um, and not necessarily intervene. Are there various types of thyroid cancer? So when we think of thyroid cancer, we would like to think kind of in three categories. We think of the good thyroid cancers, or what we call differentiated thyroid cancers, and those have names like papillary cancer, Herthel cell cancer, or follicular cancer of the thyroid. Those fall into the good prognosis category and are the vast majority of the cancer that we treat. And most of the time when you read on the internet or learn about thyroid cancer, they're really specifically talking about those cancers. We have two very rare cancers of the thyroid, one called medullary cancer and another one called anaplastic cancers, and those are the bad and the ugly thyroid cancers. Those really can be life-threatening and very problemsome, but the good news is they're only a couple percentage points of the mix. Are there any risk factors? So most thyroid cancers we think are what are called sporadic or just bad luck, but there are things that can put people at risk for thyroid cancer. Um, specifically, if we know that it runs in your family, genetics is always a factor. And so again, if you know that thyroid cancer runs in your family, you should be checked regularly. Um, other things can be things like a history of radiation exposure. It was really popular in the middle of the last century for people to get radiation treatments for things like acne or an enlarged thymus gland in the chest, or sometimes people are treated for childhood lymphoma with external beam radiation therapy. And so a heavy dose of radiation exposure, not just regular old dental x-rays or mammograms, but a heavy dose of radiation exposure can put people at risk. There are other mild risk factors and perhaps some environmental ones we don't know about yet, um, but those are kind of the main ones that we think of. And what are some symptoms? Well, it turns out most people with thyroid cancer don't have any symptoms at all. We find most of the cancers as an accident. 
a lot of people are going in for medical imaging, whether it's to look at, say, their carotid glands or carotid vessels looking for plaque development, or maybe got in a car accident and as a consequence, medical imaging was done. And so most of the things that we find are accidental findings and are caught early. The most common symptom of somebody that finds their own thyroid cancer or their doctor finds their thyroid cancer is a lump. And so if you were to feel a lump in the neck or a lump on the side of the neck, we'd certainly want you to seek medical attention and get that checked out. Sometimes those lumps can be a little more internal. So symptoms like voice changes, trouble swallowing, or pain, those are usually uncommon symptoms that again can be quite concerning and should be checked out by your doctor. And lastly, how do you treat thyroid cancer? Well, it turns out that thyroid cancer is very treatable um, at all stages, and most patients have a great prognosis. Uh, the bad news is the main treatment for thyroid cancer is surgery, and that's removal of part or all of the thyroid gland. That also then means usually most patients are on lifelong thyroid hormone therapy afterwards. We don't always have to use other therapies. For thyroid cancer, we don't typically use chemotherapy or external beam radiation treatments, but sometimes we have some unique treatments like radioactive iodine tablet therapy um, that target thyroid cancer specifically. And so again, it's very treatable cancer, but we like to catch it early because the earlier we catch it, the less trouble it causes. Dr. Vanderbeen, thanks so much for taking part in this discussion today. As a member of the Sarah Cannon Cancer Network of Excellence, Health One's network of hospitals offers the most advanced cancer treatment options and some of the most experienced specialists in the Denver area. For more information about thyroid cancer or to reach Dr. Vanderveen, call 303-407-0280 or visit Denvo, denverendosurgery.com. That's Denver, E-N-D-O-S-U-R-G-E-R-Y.com. Thank you.